wonder what's going through Andy Gorham's mind. He had uh, his dream transfer to Rangers. He loved his time at Hibs, but he wanted to step up. But here, his team being embarrassed. Oh, and nearly further embarrassment. Gorham's there. And he just knocked it away. Had the last from right again. Well, I think this is the first mistake I've seen Gary Stevens make this season. I'm not sure whether he thought of leaving it stuck his foot up and Andy Gorham had to be very athletic indeed to turn that one away Hatley now trying to get away from McIntyre and the isolated Hunter then Johnson has the shot oh it's just under both McCoy was there for the rebound and Barrage has recovered somehow Astonishing! Oh my goodness, this is incredible stuff, a magnificent shot here from Moe George. I think he's done everything right. Looks up, left foot shot, crashes off the post. John Burry's quickly in his feet, Ali McCoy's follows it in, and John Burry's handles it cleanly. I think Hibs will be thinking this is their night. Here's Evans. Hamilton in the middle. And Evans! Oh. Well, he is going to let us know he's around. It's aimed towards Haitley and it's found him. McCall for McCoy. For McCall! So nearly for Rangers and McCall there in sheer frustration. Evans again. Oh, what's more? Gorham acrobatically. Three minutes to go. And it's right again. And Gorham's hump. Oh, just held on to it. Otherwise, Evans would have knocked the final nail in the Rangers' coffin. Well, for all the Rangers press in the second half, it's Andy Gorham that's had to make the best save. He's pulled off two or three very good saves in the second half. Well, John Burridge hasn't really been troubled. The greatest night in Alec Miller's management against his old club. Stevens, is that obstruction? It could have been called that way. It hasn't been. The Rangers still have to get the ball a long way forward. The 90 minutes are up on my watch. has been full of surprises but here at Hampden Park the biggest sensation of them all Rangers are out and Hibernian who's only won this competition once are uh, through to the final the manager is in ecstasy the goal scored back in the 28th minute by Keith Wright and Alec Miller goes to Andy Gorham in a lovely show of sportsmanship there there's Gordon Hunter who had a fantastic game at the back along with Tommy McIntyre. Hibbs, who recovered from a calamitous time last season. 12 games unbeaten now, and this the most prized scalp of all. That semi-final victory confirmed the rebirth of Hibernian and how the High B family celebrated. Those dark days belong to yesterday because the club was now in the most caring of hands. Hibs kids of all ages could smile again. The nightmare was over and Hibernian Football Club epitomised once again the very stuff that dreams are made of.
But could that most elusive dream come true? Would Hibbs shatter the hopes of those great cup fighters Dunfermline Athletic and lift the Skull Cup? The legions in green and white which flocked to Hamden certainly thought so. Unbelievably, here was their team, the team that almost died within touching distance of a miracle. Well, would Alec Miller's lucky white heather do the trick for Hibbs in the Skull Cup final? The manager and his backroom team had done all that they possibly could, and it was now up to the players. Lined up in the Hamden pitch are the men who wore the green and white of Hibernian in this historic match. The captain and assistant manager, Murdo McLeod, John Burridge, Willie Miller, Pat McGinley, Graham Mitchell, Mickey Weir, Keith Wright, Tommy McIntyre, Gareth Evans, Brian Hamilton, Gordon Hunter and substitutes Neil Orr and Dave Beaumont. Alec Miller and his Hibs players may not have paid the Hamden Pipers on that October Sunday in 1991, but after the interval, they certainly called the tune. No substitutions at half-time. Hibs attacking the goal to the right in the second half. Three weeks ago, they beat Dunfermline three goals to nil. And it's been a, a very different scenario here, and I think deep down, even Hibbs expected that, but Wright getting across in to try to uh, assert Hibbs right to win the Skull Cup early in the second half. It's a good ball in near post there, but what good defending from Norrie McCarthy. Two goals to Hibbs in Edinburgh from corners. Again, it's the willingness of Gareth Evans to shoot. Here's Weir again, and it's a penalty. Sharp on Weir, a penalty for Hibbs. The warning signs were out. Well, they played a little one too about a minute ago. Look at the arms there. Remy Sharp cross round them, then the little push. It's a complete miss kick from Mickey Weir that actually sends them down. But I certainly think there was enough contact there from the referee's position to suggest that penalty was a right decision. Now, the ball is in the hands of uh, Tommy McIntyre. Andy Rhodes, whose ability at stopping penalties has got Dunfermline in this far, but McIntyre completely outwits him. And Hibs are in front. Four minutes into the second half. It has been a rampant four minutes for Alec Miller's men too, and they've crowned it by taking the lead. I thought that Alec Miller would tell his team to up the tempo. And they certainly have done, haven't they, Martin? They've been at Dunfermline straight from the off putting them back under pressure and when you want a cool head in a cup final Tommy McIntyre shows what it's all about great composure there McIntyre's right in there and Rhodes was struggling where can he get the shot in but not towards goal Andy Rhodes found uh, Tommy McIntyre a difficult opponent again yeah, he certainly cross. does. He doesn't quite get the punch he would like here. Brave goalkeeping comes in amongst the crowd of players, but doesn't quite get it away. But little Mickey Weir's very alive to it, isn't he? Takes a touch and just screws it wide of the post. McWilliams. There's Leach trying to get into the game. Very difficult. And his team is struggling to get possession in midfield and they're giving it away in that department as McWilliams did that. Weir. Hibbs will feel that a second goal can feel it now. And that Rose just getting a strong enough arm to it to knock the ball away from those who are following in. And uh, Rhodes again. Well, Raymond Sharp really is having a torrid time. 
when little Mickey Weir goes at him with pace. Look at that. Gets the one-two. And that's the third time he's left him for dead in that situation. And McLeod has uh, won cups with Celtic in Germany with uh, Borussia Dortmund. And Hope's here with Hibbs, but Billy Davis had to say now. And that's John Burridge at his best. With very little to do. But still most agile shot stopper oh yeah he's one of the best goalkeepers you'll ever see on your line and I think this is possibly the first shot he's had to save and that one is definitely sneaking in bottom corner and it's McIntyre's goal that is the difference between the two sides coming early in the second half from the penalty spot and Mickey Weir went down and there's no offside here it's Keith Wright and that for Hibbs could well mean the Skull Cup Alex Miller believes that Dunfermline are dumbstruck. Well, they've threatened so often to cut their own throats this game, haven't they, Dunfermline? Taking chances at the back. And Eddie Cunnington, who's only barely on the park, gets caught in possession. Mickey Weir rolls in, Keith Wright. And I never for a minute thought this man would miss Martin. He's absolutely excellent when he goes through one-on-ones. Here it is. Is it offside? It's very close, but no, it's not. Davy Moyes comes out, tries to catch him. Keith Wright says, no, Skull Cup's ours. Here's Hamilton. Oh! It hit the post and bounced back. Clean out of the penalty area. A great try from Brian Hamilton. And the Hibs might still collect a third goal. McGinley! Well, they're all desperate to get their name on the score sheet now. You can sense that the head players believe it's all over. They're all desperate to score in a cup final. And what a shot this is to put the icing on the cake for them. Beat Sandy Rhodes, all ends up that Brian Hamilton shot. Look at the power he puts in it. It's a magnificent strike. And what a way that would have been for him to finish it off. And Dunfermline finishing on the attack Cosma takes it and Burridge comes a long long way McWilliams Hibs have won the Skull Cup the 1991 final has gone to form after a topsy-turvy tournament what an achievement by Alec Miller and his players Tommy McIntyre's penalty early in the second half really set them on their way and after that there were some anxious moments and then Keith Wright it really has been his tournament he has scored in every round and his moment of glory made absolutely sure for Hibbs that's a nice touch Alec Miller and Davy Moyes always amazes me Martin when a manager's put as much into it as that that he never gets up there either well, Hibs couldn't have envisaged this last year. They could have gone out of existence. But they are back in business in some style. There are two trophies to collect. That's the League Cup. Alongside the Skull Cup. And the silverware now glittering. In the Hibs trophy cabinet when they get it back to Easter Road Tommy McIntyre who's calm penalty and Keith Wright the other goal scorer and John Burridge has another souvenir to go with the English League Cup win with Aston Villa and that was 14 years ago now Mickey Weir the man of the match Neil Orr 